Okay guys, in this video I'm going to be doing a top 5 list of things you might not know about Canada because as most of you already know, I am Canadian and usually you guys are confused when I'm talking about some things that only are in Canada. So in this list I will give you top 5 facts about Canada and keep in mind some of them are a bit harder to explain but I'll try my best to give you basic ideas so that you can understand more about Canada and also what I'm talking about half the time. So yeah, hope you guys enjoy. Here we go, let's get started! First on the list we have is Poutine. Now it was made in Quebec and it's basically the most Canadian thing you can possibly get. All it is is fries, gravy, and cheese. But we have different variations here depending on where you go. For example, New York Fries has pulled pork. It has vegetarian, which is basically called the works. It has a chili version, and also it has buttered chicken. My personal favorite is the pulled pork version of it, but yeah. We also have pretty much every single fast food restaurant has at least their own version of poutine and you can find it anywhere in Canada and it's also really easy to make. It's one of the most famous things that we're known for. But most people don't understand what it is. So yeah, basically all it is is just fries, gravy, and cheese, but it is like the most amazing combination ever. I strongly recommend you guys try it. You'll love it. Next up, I will explain our money to you because it is a little bit confusing if you're not Canadian. So first of all, we have plastic money. Now, about, can't remember exactly how many years ago, but a few years ago, we switched from paper money to plastic money, and it's a whole lot easier, because the money doesn't get destroyed as easily. But basically, our money is color-coded. $5 bills are light blue. $10 bills are a darker blue. $20 bills are green. $50 bills are red. And then our $100 bills are like a brownish, a light brown color, like a brownish beige color. And then we also have some coins. Um, we haven't used the 50 cent coin in about 20 years, I believe. Might be longer, I don't know. But I personally haven't seen them since I was a little kid, so yeah. And then a couple years ago, when we switched to the plastic money, we got rid of the penny. Sorry, my voice just cracked. We got rid of the penny. So we have the nickel, the dime, the quarter. And those are 5, 10, and 25. And then we also have loonies, which is $1. And then we have toonies, which is $2. And also one thing that we like to do is... Most other countries do this too, you know, like if there's a special event, you know, or something like that. We have collector's editions of the coins. And usually it's based off of what that event is. Like, for example, uh, the 2010 Olympics was in Vancouver. So we had 2010 Olympic coins that had like different events on them depending on what coin you got and then uh last year was the 150th of canada so we had special ones for that so depending on what the event is we have rare coins and people like to collect them and then within a couple of years they become valuable and stuff like that but yeah so that's basically the money in a nutshell it's not confusing but it's kind of odd from what i've heard but, I mean, I'm Canadian, so it's normal to me. But anyway, that's basically the rundown of our money and what they are. So, yeah. Next up, we have the Caesar. Now, this was actually made by a local bartender in my particular town that I live in, which is Calgary, Alberta. And basically, one day, he wanted to make a new drink because he wanted to add something to his menu that no other place had. So he created the Caesar. Basically, it's like a Bloody Mary, but there's slight variations and it's more inspired by Italy. And basically, it's simple, but complicated. And there's actually a brand name now called Claymore and they have different variations of the Caesar, like different flavors. And the ones that are on market right now are 
uh, pickled bean, extra spicy, original, and lime. Lime isn't very good. It has a weird aftertaste to it. But my personal favorite is pickled bean. So, I don't know. I'm weird. I like pickles. But basically, uh, depending on where you go also, some restaurants put like stuff inside the Caesar and on top of it, you know, sitting on top of the glass. Um, I've seen bacon in there. I've seen pickles in there. Nine out of ten times, they have at least one piece of celery, which is the normal. But sometimes, restaurants will put, like, little things on top. Like, um, my favorite bar that I go to a lot has, a, like, a little tiny burger on top of it. And then they've also got, like, uh, like a rolled-up piece of bacon, you know, on a skewer sticking out of it. So, yeah. Keep in mind, though... This is an alcoholic drink, guys. So if you want to try a Caesar, I, like I, I strongly advise you to wait if you're not over the legal drinking age in your country, wherever you may live. But if you really, really, really want to try it and you're under the drinking age, you can ask for a virgin Caesar, which is basically no vodka. And. It, pr it pretty much tastes the same, and I do like both the alcoholic and the non-alcoholic version, so yeah. If you really want to try it and you're under the drinking age, try a virgin. I'm sure you guys will like it. And like I said, it is easy to make. It looks complicated, but it's pretty easy to make, and it's really good, and it's great for parties and stuff like that. So, with that said, next up we have Smarties. Now, these are a very popular candy here in Canada, and they are a little bit different than what you might be thinking. Now, typically, our Smarties are kind of like little M&Ms, and they have different colors and stuff like that, and you'll get variations inside the boxes, and the boxes look really neat. but what most people think of Smarties are actually called something different here. We call those rockets. And basically, we're just weird. <laughs> we decided that we we're going to change the name of a candy and make a whole new candy that confuses the entire world. Now you can get event ones, but those are very rare and most places don't actually sell them they usually just sell the normal package and yeah we have a different kind of smarties here there isn't really much facts about this that really needs to be known other than we call smarties rockets and smarties are a totally different thing so this is a little bit of a shorter fact, but there you go. You know what Smarties are. And last but not least, we have the Royal Family. Now, most people get confused with this because they think that just because we have a government doesn't means we don't have a Royal Family. But we do have a Queen. Queen Elizabeth II is also our Queen, as well as the Queen of the United Kingdom. And basically, she only really steps in if we really need her to. But otherwise, she just lets us do our own thing. However, that being said, she's still our queen, and it's still our royal family. So I'll give you guys a little bit of information. I'm not going to go too in-depth of it. I'm just going to give you the basics that everyone learns about. So... First off, Queen Elizabeth II. Her husband, Philip, is still technically a prince. He's what's considered to be a consort. Which is basically like the husband, wife, spouse, or significant other of the particular person who is in power. And the reason why he's not king is because technically Queen Elizabeth 
inherited the throne from her father, King George VII. So, Philip still stayed prince, but he got the title of consort. However, if a male were to inherit the throne, he'd become king, and then his wife, or whatever, would become queen, you know? So, basically, it's just, it's a weird system. But, at the moment, the current person in line is Prince Charles, but there's been rumors that he's going to be knocked down and Prince William will be the next in line, making Kate also be the next in line. Don't know how true this is, it's, like I said, a rumor that's going around, but anyway. Mainly what I wanted to talk about is Prince William and Princess Kate. Now, they are currently like the most active members of the royal family when it comes to Canada related. Um, they have two children as well. There's Prince George and then Princess Charlotte. And they haven't really been coming to Canada since Princess, like Prince George was born. So it's been a few years since I've been here. But one of the most memorable things that they did was a tour of Canada, and they actually went to an event that's held in Calgary called the Calgary Stampede. And the reason why they went there is because it's considered the greatest outdoor show in the world, because we have a huge rodeo, we have a fair, there is a carnival, and then there's also multiple concerts that take place all within this event. It's the entire thing, it encapsulates it, and it's about a week. So, they came to that, and then they went other places. And it's very common for the royal family to come to Ottawa, which is the capital of Canada. So, they've been very active in the Canadian government, but more so behind the scenes. That's why most people don't realize that we do have a government. But, we, like... Oh, I just, most people don't realize we have most people don't realize we have a royal family, but technically we have both. We have a prime minister and we have a queen. I think we might be the only country that has both. It's kind of cool. So there's another little fact that you guys know. But anyway, that's the basics of the royal family. If you're interested in knowing more, I strongly suggest looking it up. You know, because it's really interesting. The royal family is has a very very interesting past that I highly recommend you guys look up.